Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So Matthew chapter 1. If you would, grab your Bibles that are in front of you. but rather those names that are here establish a foundation of faith for Jesus to work from. For when Jesus hits his 30s, the faithful know who all of these forefathers and mothers were, but now Jesus can transform those names not as a tradition, but as examples of faith for the faithful to follow, who all point to one who changes our lives by this one particular thought, life. And no, it's not the breakfast cereal that I'm speaking of. <laughs> so continuing with this chapter, we then read about the birth of Jesus, and I think it's kind of funny, verse 18. Verse 18, where it says, Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. Now, as a father of two, I can tell you that neither of our two boys' births went exactly as planned. Allow me to elaborate. The birthing process of both Matthew and Adam had nothing to do with me. Sure, they called me a coach, or at least that's what I was hoping that they would call me. When Matthew was around, coming out of Jenny, I'm pretty sure Jenny didn't want anything to do with me, especially during the contractions. Don't touch me! And with Adam, well, it was a planned date. Adam wanted to stay a little extra time inside his mom. However, Jenny was going to do it right, but this time she was going to have an epidural. And an epidural, for those who do not know, you don't feel anything, right? You actually feel pretty good. And when it comes to the contractions, you go, oh, there's a contraction. A little something happened down there. But me, being the worried word that I am, here I'm worrying about the baby to come and the mom. I was holding Jenny's hand, and supposedly my stress came to Jenny's attention when she turned to me and said, Honey, will you please stop? You're going to rub my hand raw. <laughs> so regardless, 
regardless of my stress and worry, two healthy babies were born. And they, well, and they are with us for 17 and 14 years, respectively. They have been born with us. And I'm glad they're here. But the funny thing about this particular chapter kind of skips over Mary's parts. It is all about Joseph and Joseph's dream and how righteous he is. And then suddenly at the very end of that particular part, poof, we got a baby. Here is the Messiah, the Son of God, Emmanuel with us. And I've often asked myself, why on earth did Matthew do this? In comparison to Luke, where we hear so much more, we hear about the shepherds, we hear about angels, we hear about a stable and a star that guides all of them there. Yet here, in the Gospel of Matthew, it's not so much about the pomp and circumstance. The author is telling us that the birth of Jesus is the fulfillment of the foundation that has been set before him. It is the foundation that has been set before him. And that God was now behaving like no one had ever seen this before. Instead of this you know, mighty chasm between creator and people, he is with us. He is amongst us. He has gone through birth just like us. He has suffered pain just like us. He has encountered brokenness just like us. He has even died just like us. He has gone through everything just like us so that love could happen. Or better yet, the renewal of life could happen within you and within the highs and lows of your day. We live in a world these days where we see much darkness. We see it on our television screens, we see it on our social media, we see it around our neighborhood, and you may even see it in your homes. You see darkness. It's tough out there these days. Yet during these times or moments, we are called to seek his face, first guess in a manger, that is to come here, then on a cross, followed by his appearance and resurrection to his disciples where he showed them his hands and his feet and his sides. We are called to seek him, for that is where true life is found, where grace is realized, where a new foundation has been created in you. Within the midst of who you are, and how you live, oh come, oh come, Emmanuel, as the song goes. We need his life. We are his life. Oh come, oh come, Emmanuel. Amen.